Hello, my name is Philip Troy. I am originally from Denmark, South Carolina, but I currently live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My two brothers and I are sixth generation direct lineage descendants of the Felder Riley family. This family has lived on the same farm in Denmark since at least 1804 and possibly before American independence. A seventh generation descendant lives on the farm today. Beth Guess and Eric Powell asked me to do a presentation on two cemeteries in the Denmark area where some of the first four generations of Felder Riley's are buried. The oldest cemetery, which we refer to as the Felder Riley Cemetery, is a family cemetery actually located on the farm. Family members were buried there from 1804 to possibly as late as 1865. The second cemetery is at the location of the Old Bethel Methodist Church, a Methodist circuit church, which was active from the 1850s through the early 1900s. Along with other parishioners, there are two generations of Felder Riley's buried there. My cousin, Jean Hendrickson, and I have been work researching the families for quite a few years. We hope you all enjoy this story. Before I get into the actual presentation, I would like to express my appreciation to Wofford College and Dr. R. Philip Stone, archivist, whose assistance in researching the Grahams and Bethel Circuit Churches was truly valuable to this presentation and invaluable to me. Let's talk about early settlement. Most of us are aware that in 1735, 200 Swiss, German, and Dutch immigrants formed a community in Orangeburg Township on the North Edisto. Land grants at the time were limited to Orangeburg Township itself, probably for safety reasons. The second wave of immigrants started to arrive in the 1753 era, and the Rileys, my family, arrived at that time. They received a land grant for land in Kaka Swamp in what is today Calhoun County. By the 1760s, population had spread uh, beyond Orangeburg Township. The primary cause was population growth, both from maturing children of the original settlers and additional immigrants that were arriving all the time. The General Assembly responded by opening up uh, the township or areas outside of Orangeburg Township for settlement. They improved transportation, including the constructions of roads, such as the Charleston Augusta Road that runs along the south side of South Edisto River and still exists today. They also cleared the Edisto River for navigation. This opened up the land and made it reasonable for the uh, settlers to move there. We know from the South Carolina Department of Archives and History that by 1760s, families like the Felders were picking up land grants in Ber Berkeley County and also south of the South Edisto River. However, we don't know exactly when the Felders started the activity south of the South Edisto. We know th that in a 913-acre plant survey was surveyed for Henry Felder Sr. on January 18, 1786. But we have requested records to determine why it was the uh, survey was performed, but we don't know exactly what purpose at this point. On September 9, 1797, Henry Felder Jr. sold 420 of the 915 acres to his half-brother, David Felder. David Felder is the Felder it, with, um, in our lineage from the Felder family. In 1804, David Felder's first wife was buried in the cemetery on the farm. So we know that the farm was in the Felder's hands by 1804, or actually before that, in 1797 at least, because that was when Henry Felder sold the parcel to his brother David. This Google Earth picture is provided to orient you uh, to the location of Denmark relative to the farm. The Riley farm is outlined in orange as it existed in 1940. It was 750 acres located about a mile north of Denmark. While the farm existed in at least 1800, pretty much everything else that you see in this picture did not. Denmark, US 321 running north and south, Highway 78 running east and west, all did not exist. South Carolina 70, which runs northeast uh, to Benneker's Bridge, 
may have existed at the time, but probably did not. This is a little bit more close-up view of the farm to provide a little more detail. The green line is the Seaboard Railroad. The road right next to it to the east is 321. The road running northeast at the edge of the farm uh, goes to the South Edisto River and the Charleston Augusta Highway that I mentioned before. And the poorly drawn girl, gold circle um, is the location of the Felder Ryler Cemetery, Felder Riley Cemetery, inside the orange boundary of the farm. Here's what we know about Felder Riley Cemetery with certainty. There are six headstones, and thus we know the identity of six people buried there. David Felder, the youngest son of Captain Henry Felder and Katharina Snell. Esther Addison, the first wife of David Felder. Margaret Elizabeth Guest, the second wife of David Felder. John W.R. Felder, the brother of David Felder. Priscilla Felder Holman, daughter of David Felder and wife of Henry Holman and Henry Holman. This is the Felder Riley Cemetery as it appeared in 2008. You can see five of the headstones and one footstone clearly. One of the headstones is uh, laying on the ground and is not visible in the picture. This is a picture of me transcribing the inscription on one of the headstones. Because we can read all of the headstones, the six of them, then we're reasonably certain that we know who is buried there. This is the headstone of David Felder, the son of Captain Henry Felder. David was born on 12 February 1776, and he died 18 December 1849. David was my third great-grandfather. My second great-grandfather was John George Riley II, who married David's daughter Priscilla Felder. David left the farm to John George and Priscilla when he passed away. I have transcribed the headstone and it is on the next slide. You can pause the video if you would like to read it. It's kind of interesting to read. This is the headstone of Esther Addison Felder, David Felder's first wife, and they had three children together. Esther died on 8 April 1884 at age 25 years, three months and 20 days. They had three children, two of which died as adults at an age that they probably were buried away from home. The third was their daughter Priscilla, who married Henry Holman. That couple is buried in the cemetery. This fallen stone marks the grave of Margaret Elizabeth Guess, Davis Felder's second wife. De uh, Margaret died on the 29th of April, 1845, at age 59 years, 6 months, and 17 days. David Felder and Margaret um, had 13 children. Two died as young ch children and are buried, uh, are likely buried in the cemetery. The rest, some have been buried in other places, and most of them, we do not know where they were buried at all. This stone marks the burial site of John Wesley Railford Felder, uh, otherwise known as John W.R. Felder. He was born on 25, or excuse me, 29 November 1823, and he died 9 September 1861 from typhoid. He was in the army, but died from typhoid. Um, he was or his parents, David and Margaret Elizabeth Guess, also died of typhoid shortly afterwards.
These two stones mark the graves of Henry Holman and his wife Priscilla Felder, daughter of David Felder and Margaret Elizabeth Guess. Unfortunately, I did not take pictures that were clear enough for me to transcribe at home. I need to do that the next time I go to this cemetery. This slide can really be summed up rather easily. We had a cousin, and we were lucky enough to have a cousin, of a couple of generations ago that did a great deal of family research and that he fully documented what he found. What neither he nor Gene and I were able to find was the graves of approximately 10 to 12 descendants of David Felder and his wives, mostly, mostly children of um, John George Riley II and Drusilla Felder. I'm not sure exactly when it occurred, but at some point things started to fit together for Gene and I. We realized that George Riley and Drusilla Felder Riley, who inherited the farm from David Felder, just, um, died at home in 1861 from typhoid. So did several of the children, also of typhoid. Only Eli Christian Riley, who was 18, and Elizabeth Ann Riley, who was 24, in 1861 survived the war. That being the case, where was everybody buried? The logical place was in the farm cemetery. Maybe what happened was they used wooden crosses. After all, if stones were even available, they had to come from Charleston. And the idea at that point of using ground penetrating radar was born. Ground penetrating radar is a process of using radar signals to detect disturbances in the soil. First patented in 1910 using radar to locate buried objects, it had minimal use until military applications in the 1970s. It's used in many fields today, including archaeology, uh, earth sciences, mining, non-destructive testing, and environmental remediation. It does not damage any object located in the ground. Unfortunately, I somehow managed to lose the uh, memory stick that had the images of the ground penetrating radar being performed at the Felder Riley Cemetery. The picture on the left shows an individual pushing the detector uh, across the sand, and the output is the image on the right. From that output, a trained specialist can detail or detect ground disturbances that may have occurred hundreds of years ago. To perform the ground penetrating radar examination, we first had to clear the surface of leaves and debris. We found about 10 sunken graves, which were later uh, confirmed by the ground penetrating radar evaluation. We also found uh, four possible children's graves. The adult graves had the visible depressions that we've mentioned. Con the conclusion is that the Felder Riley Cemetery is the likely location of missing David Felder and John George Riley family members' graves. If this conclusion is correct, then John George and Drusilla Riley's son, George S. Riley, is possibly the last person in the family to have been buried in the cemetery. This slide identifies family members most likely to be buried at the cemetery in unmarked graves. Okay, it's now time to turn to the Old Bethel Methodist Church and Cemetery. We're going to talk about how long or how did the church come to be, what became of the church and its congregation, and at the end we'll do a virtual tour of Old Bethel Cemetery. I suspect this is probably a refresher for most of you, but to understand the origins of Old Bethel Methodist Church, we need to do a little history lesson. If you look back, by the 1780s, the um, General Assembly decided that the uh, agricultural area south of the South Edisto was, uh, had sufficient population to justify a new judicial district. In 1785, Winton District was formed from part of Orangeburg District. In 1798, the district was renamed for John Barnwell, a Revolutionary War leader. And just so you know, up to today, part of Bam, or part of Barnwell was used to create Bamberg County in, uh, January of 1897 referendum. As with a lot of things that happened in our country, the railroad played a huge role. 
In 1830, the South Carolina Railroad constructed the first six miles of track west from Charleston. In 1833, they completed the line from Charleston to Hamburg, so it went from Charleston to Branchville to what is now Bamberg to Blackville to Hamburg or Augusta. In 1840, they completed the line from Branchville to Columbia, which went through Orangeburg. In 1848, they completed the line from Kingsville to Camden, and in 1853, they completed the bridge across the Savannah River to Augusta. By the early 1820s, Bamberg County was um, certainly not a metropolis. There were a few bridges over the South Edisto, Car uh, Connor uh, Cannons Bridge, Benneker's Bridge, and Holland's Bridge. There were a few farms and a lot of trees. What there wasn't was a Denmark or a Bamberg or any other really t uh, what we would consider a town to speak of. What the railroad did was when they uh, came through the Denmark area, they bought 17 acres of land from Captain Z.G. Graham for a turnout or a service area for trains if they needed. Graham's was established in, or in 1837 and incorporated in 1870, and the name was changed to Sado in 1890. Think of Graham's or Sado as sort of a suburb southeast of um, Denmark on US 78. This is the same slide I showed before to orient you to the uh, Felder and Riley Farm, the cemetery in Denmark. Uh, everything that you see as Denmark did not exist at the time. What has been added is the South Carolina Railroad, which ultimately became the Southern Railroad, which is the green line running from southeast to northwest. The circle is the location of Graham's turnout. This is the same image that I showed before, but with a wider field of view. Again, most of what you see um, that's actually there in the image was not there in 1850s. The farm is still outlined in orange with the cemetery marked with the gold circle. The South Carolina Railroad runs southeast to northwest. Graham's is the circle or the green circle. And the, if you look to the left, there is a yellow circle um, left of center. <laughs> the cat's on the uh, desk. The uh, left of center is the green circle or yellow circle, and that is the location of the Old Bethel Methodist Church, which was about two miles out of town. There was also a, another Methodist um, circuit church located in Graham's turnout, and that would have been inside the green circle. Okay, now, this is when things start to happen. In 1889, the Manchester and Augusta Railroad, which ultimately becomes part of the Atlantic coastline, opens a line from Sumter through Orangeburg to Denmark. Service was extended to Augusta in 1894. In 1891, the Southbound Railroad, which becomes part of the Seaboard Railroad, opens a 136-mile line from Columbia to Savannah. So this is a close-up view of what's actually going on. You have the South Carolina Railroad still running southeast to northwest and marked in green. You have the um, Manchester and Augusta Railroad, or the coastline in purple, and the southbound railroad, which becomes the seaboard, uh, in blue. And they cross at just uh, west of Sado, or Graham's Turnout, whatever you want to call it, and that area becomes called the crossings. And voila, out of nowhere, somewhere, somehow Denmark becomes the epicenter of railroading in the entire world. Or at least those of us from Denmark like to think so. So. The Southbound Railroad laid out a town next to the railroad tracks at the crossings. The town was renamed Denmark in 1891, and the Rice Hotel was built in 1893. The streets were paved, and the street lights installed in 1924. Denmark was on the map. 
Now this slide really doesn't have much to do with anything important of this presentation, but it is rather humorous. It turns out that Denmark was uh, named for a seaboard official, Captain Isidore Denmark, well, definitely Denmark, but I'm not too sure about his first name, who was president of the Southbound Railroad Construction Company. Norway, which um, was also a, a Southbound Railroad town, was named to fit what became the Southbound's Scandinavian naming, or naming scheme. Sweden, which was known as Pruitt Boiling Springs, was finally changed to Sweden to fit the railroad scheme. And Finland, which is nothing more than a crossroads uh, on the road from Orangeburg to Denmark, was named Finland just for the fun of it. Now, this wasn't so bad for me when I was in the Navy. Uh, it, I used to be stationed in Charleston on a submarine, and, you know, we would uh, be in port, and I would uh, uh, need to go, I wanted to go home for some reason, and uh, for a family reunion or whatnot, and I would tell them that I was going to Denmark for a family reunion. Now, nobody on that ship besides me was from South Carolina, so they immediately assumed that I was going to Denmark, that other Denmark, right? And uh, so they would let me go. And never, ever did I bother to inform them that Denmark was only 86 miles up the road. And I did, well, didn't really need all that time to fly to the Denmark and Europe. By this point, Denmark even had its own hotel. It was named the Rice Hotel, but most people that I know, at least when I was young, called it the Denmark Hotel. At some point, it was dismantled, but I do remember seeing it, and uh, it was kind of a landmark in Denmark for quite a long time. This is a 1926 picture of downtown Denmark, which I have included to give you an idea of what a thriving metropolis it was. By the early 1900s, the parishioners wanted to move the Methodist Church into the new growing town of Denmark. The two circuit churches, Old Bethel and Graham's, that were built for rural farmers, combined and built a new modern church in Denmark. This is the Bethel Park United Methodist Church of Denmark. It was built in 1907. Um, by the combined congregations of the Graham Circuit Church and the Old Bethel Circuit Church. Old Bethel does not ex uh, exist anymore. The Graham Circuit Church building is still standing in uh, what is Sado, referred to as Sado now. The Old Bethel Church was demolished and its timbers were used in the new church and in the parsonage. From this picture, you can understand that this was quite a change from two small wooden circuit churches. Today, all that remains at the Old Bethel site is the cemetery. The significance of the Old Bethel Cemetery to the Denmark Rileys is that the only two descendants of John George Riley's family that survived the war between the states are buried there. They're Eli Christian Riley, and Elizabeth Ann Riley. Elizabeth Ann Riley had no children. Eli Christian Riley married Julia Ann Wilson, who was the daughter of Reverend Charles Wilson, who is buried at White House Church, Methodist Church, um, on Route 301, about two miles east of I-26. They had a number of children, some of which are also buried with them at uh, the Old Bethel Cemetery. As such, all descendants of John George Riley II and in his line are descendants of Eli Christian Riley. This is a picture of the Old Bethel Cemetery as it appeared in 2008. Two people, Roy Hart and Coy Cox, both outstanding members of the community and also of Old 
Beth, or a Bethel Park Methodist Church, had been maintaining the cemetery for quite a while. At this point, it was starting to become physically impossible for them to do that, and so Gene and I had been trying to help out for quite a while. What you're looking at is the Riley plot in the cemetery, and it's bordered by um, a granite boundary. You can see a little bit of it on the far right and a little bit over it to the left, a little tree on the left side uh, behind the two small stones. This is how the cemetery looked in the fall of uh, 2019. Once again, we're looking at the Riley plot, and you can see the two small, almost identical stones just over the top of the fence in the left side of the picture, and the plot runs down to the taller stone um, that's almost in line with them. To the center right, you can see the granite border. Uh, the center, the other side border is between the two smaller stones and the tree on the left-hand side of the picture. This picture is uh, taken across the Riley plot um, and across the cemetery. The previous picture was taken from my right by the fence. The pine trees that are off in the distance are where the old Bethel Church was actually located. Today, there's nothing there to uh, give you an indication that that was where the church was. This is sort of a oblique view of Julia Ann Wilson and Eli Christian Riley's headstone. Uh, it's on the right. The one on the left is a different one, or different family. The border of the Riley uh, plot kind of runs diagonally across the picture to from the right lower edge to the center of the picture. This is an older picture, but uh, it gives you a closer look at the monument. This is a close up of the inscriptions on the monument. Um, they're on opposite sides, uh, and it is an older picture that I took before I cleaned up last fall. Unfortunately, I haven't been back to take pictures. <laughs> These are pictures of two headstones, one uh, Eli's sister, Elizabeth Ann Riley, and the second Julia's sister, uh, Caroline R. Wilson. I apologize for the uh, condition. I Last fall, I had uh, scrubbed all this, the headstones with a cleaning solution that you leave it sit over a year and it will take all the uh, mold and mildew off. So all the rest of the stones in the um, cemetery are, uh, look, are about like this. That they Some are better, but uh, they have the kind of mud and goo all over it. I will put them at the end of the presentation so that if anybody's interested, they can go through and look at them. And hopefully someday I can update it this year or maybe next. I'm going down in a, about a month. Or, and uh, hopefully I can uh, uh, get better pictures. Three of Eli and Julia's children are buried in the plot. Charles Wilson Riley, Drusilla Felder Riley, and Star of Heaven Riley. I have uh, included two pages of uh, listing the people who are buried in the cemetery. I copied the inscriptions from the stone as best I could, but some were not legible at the time. This is the second page um, identifying the people that are have headstones in the cemetery.
Thank you for watching this presentation. I have added 24 working pictures of the Old Bethel Cemetery. Um, it wasn't my plan to use these. I was going to go back and get other ones, but the virus kind of presented that. Um, I'm going back uh, shortly and to Denmark, and I plan on taking better ones. If anybody's interested in um, better pictures of this version, I will either uh, make them available to you or we will attach them to the presentation um, with by OGSGS. Um, thank you very much. There